Today we're going to walk through utilizing Hyveon on ASICs. So for a lot of people, um, we're actually making this video from a support perspective because a lot of times people get a machine and they get the base bitmain firmware on it, which looks a lot like this in a way, but it's a gray background and it doesn't have as many options as this one. So there is an upgrade section on your actual L3, on your coming up L7, coming up S19, whatever, where you may want to upgrade the firmware. And some people are going to ask the question, well, if I use Hyveon ASIC, do I have to use HiveOS? No, you don't. You don't have to at all. You can take advantage of all of the utilities um, without actually having to use HiveOS. So if you want to use other pool accounts, you can for sure do that. So if you want to update it to Hyveon ASIC, you're going to go to the actual HiveOS.farm website. You're going to see Hyveon ASIC here. You can click on that. And then you're going to find your actual version of whatever you're using. Remember, these always fall behind the latest releases for different machines. The reason why is because the HiveOS comes after the actual um after the actual release from Bitme, right? So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and do this to an L3. So we click L3, then you can go down here, click L3 plus or L3 plus plus. You could do an SD card, which is the manual way of flashing, or you could just download this. And once that file is downloaded, we're gonna hop back over here. You're gonna to go to your upgrade screen within your regular Bitmain interface and you're gonna go down here and you can keep your settings if you want to and you're gonna click flash image or choose a file. Once you click choose a file, it's gonna pop up and ask you about the actual file. But what we also need, sometimes you can't get through right away, so you may actually need the, uh, the remsig, which is uh, one of the files. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Um, I'm going to type in here, Hyveon rim sig file, and we can go ahead and find this real quick. Let's see if we got it. Here it is. Let's click on here, installing the installation guide for L3+, plus, L3++. Plus plus. The rem sig file, we have this actually saved local, uh, but what you might need to do uh, you're, once you go to upload that file, you may get a cannot find signature on the actual file. So then you want to download this file first. Okay. So if you go here and you upload that Hyveon actual flash image and go to flash and it gives you an error and says does not have signature, then go to this page, search hiveos.farm and then it's forward slash Hyveon hyphen ASIC hyphen firmware hyphen L3 plus. And then essentially you're going to scroll down here till you find this rem sig file because that is the item that will pop up and say cannot find signature. So then you download this file. It's going to download down into your downloads. It's called rem sig L3 and it's a tar.gz file. You're going to take that actual file and do that one first this time. So choose that file, click flash image. It's going to come up and say, cannot find uh, signature, and that's okay. That's expected. So then what you want to do is click choose file again, and then actually pull up that Hyveon file for the L3 Plus and click flash. So once that goes through and flashes, you're then going to have a little indicator up here that says that it's going to reboot. It will reboot on itself, and then once it reboots, you will have what looks like a mixed screen of both of the old one and this new one. So it'll be the light background as you click through and this until it sits for a little while. So once you do that, you're gonna notice a whole bunch of different items and options coming up for you. And the reason why I like it, I think it's important, is because you get a lot of utilities that you wouldn't typically have. For example, locate. If you have multiple items in your farm, that's a great functionality you wanna have. Minor configuration. Uh, you can go through and set multiple different types of settings. You can go in here and set global settings for your actual frequency across your board, the ASIC voltage, 
or my favorite is the auto tuner and that's one of the main reasons you want to do it because if you're looking for more hash power for example this 1300 1160 watts you want to go ahead and make sure that you can get that click save and run and it'll start it'll start along that path getting you moving and then if you also want to after auto tuning go through and do a manual chip frequency config you can as well and you can go in and set these all yourself but remember it's better to go ahead and have the auto tuner go through and do it so that you don't have any of those issues you can check the auto tuner log this will take you once you click run it's going to take you about 30 minutes and then also your check password attacks you get an option to see if anybody's been looking for that and then there is a cool option to redirect a percentage of your asic speed to a particular other wallet so if you're somebody that likes to plan ahead and put things in a different area you can for sure do that it could be for your electricity rent payments whatever and it will take a part of that and actually make that um, make that there direct it towards that Minor status is also a little bit cleaner. It's nicer, I think. Um, you get a lot, you get the details, yes, but um, you know, it's overall makes everything look pretty good. You can restart directly from here, reboot. You can go to the network. You can see what your actual names are here, which is similar to the other one. And then those diagnostics right there uh, that they give as a default, and then you can report a bug. So there are some really good features here that you can utilize uh, to get yourself going. I would say your number one thing is going to be this auto tuner configuration. If you have problems with uh, your hash boards or if you have problems with one of them is running lower hash rate than another one, uh, go in here and click this auto tuner configuration and do it, save and run. Uh, the worst thing that could ever happen is that you've got to reflash the machine again. So try it, try again. It's not a, it's, it's a science and an art at the same time, but all machines are a little bit different in the way that they accept different things, but you can all always pretty much do, do the things you need to here. The other thing you might want to look at is you can go through and look at the actual HiveOS. So if you do want to connect this with your farm, you go to HiveOS and uh, dot farm, you can get the farm hash. And then what will happen is you can check the client and it will automatically pull it into your farm so you can view the farm. Um, administration wise, you can go in and change your password. You can look at the monitor. You can go through kernel logs if you care, watchdog logs, and then there's your upgrade, reboot. And one of my favorites is the locate function, especially when you're handling more than five of these machines, it helps you uh, get things very quick without having to look up a lot of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know we went through a lot of stuff today. This is basically letting you know that you can use Hiveon as the actual firmware for the ASICs without having to use HiveOS pools, right? Um, and you get all these utility functionality and it looks a little bit better than Bitmain's basic. So I'll talk with you later. Have a great day. Let us know if you have any questions. Info at stillerforgemining.com.